rational functions? A rational function is a function that can be written as one polynomial divided by another. So r of x is equal to p of x divided by q of x, where p and q are any polynomials. A simplified rational function is such that p and q have no common factors. Now when we're talking about polynomials, for polynomials to have no common factors, a factor is another polynomial. So there can't be there can't be polynomials uh, s of x, r of x, and t of x such that p of x is equal to s of x times r of x and q of x is equal to s of x times t of x because then when we take the rational function i just realized they use r of x over here never mind if we take the rational function w of x equals p of x divided by q of x then that would be s of x times r of x divided by s of x times t of x and then that means we can simplify it. So if s of x is the only common factor of p of x and q of x, it is now in simplified form if we write it like this. So just like uh, with fractions. So that's a simplified rational function. They have no common factors. And that's the definition of factors when we're talking about polynomials. Right, so two examples, r1 of x equals x divided by, uh, sorry, x plus 2 divided by x minus 3, and r2 of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 4. These are both simplified rational functions, and you can check using polynomial division that uh, we don't have this situation over here. Now, I've asked what is the difference between the graphs of these two functions, so you can pause the video and... Uh, have a go at sketching the graphs, if you like. So we're going to take a look at the two graphs. All right, so this is the graph of y equals x plus 2 divided by x minus 3. So this red, red color is that graph there. And I also included the lines y equals 1 in blue and x equals 3 in green. I graphed this in Desmos, by the way, in case you're not familiar, www desmos.com. Very convenient. Now let's call this function f of x, just not to create confusion. So this is the rational function f of x. And we can make the observation that there's something interesting happening at uh, x equals 3. Clearly f of 3, which is equal to 3 plus 2 divided by 3 minus 3, is undefined because we cannot divide by zero. So, however, as x gets closer and closer to 3, um, well, if we say f of x is equal to uh, p of x divided by q of x, then we can see that uh, p of x gets closer and closer towards 5, and q of x gets closer and closer towards zero. And so since the bottom part is getting closer and closer towards zero, that means we're dividing by a smaller and smaller number in terms of absolute value. And if you consider like one divided by a half equals two, one divided by a tenth equals 10, and one divided by 1 over 1 billion equals 1 billion, you get the idea that this thing is going to get very, very big the closer and closer q of x gets towards 0. And so that's why the function shoots upwards towards, one fin towards infinity here as 
X is getting closer and closer towards 3 from the right hand side. And on the on the left hand side, as X is getting closer and closer towards 3 from uh, from numbers that are smaller than 3, we can see that we have the uh, opposite effect happening. Because in fact, Q of X is less than 0 on this side. Q of X is less than 0. So we got the like negative values. And so as we can see, the function is heading towards negative infinity from below. So anyway, hopefully you already knew that uh, before doing this course, but if you didn't, don't worry. Um, you know it now. So this is called a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. The word vertical obviously means up and down. So like this, hence the name vertical asymptote. So the function is not defined at that point, but it gets, uh, well, kind of closer and closer towards it when you draw the when you draw the graph, which means the function values are going to infinity and negative infinity. Meanwhile, on the other side, for uh, y equals one, we see that, uh, well, it's actually impossible to get uh, y equals one out of this function. So all other values of y are possible, but not y equals 1. And you can quickly you can quickly see why, because if you let f of x equal 1, then you have 1 equals x plus 2 divided by x minus 3, and then rearranging that equation, uh, you'll get x minus 3 equals x plus 2, and so negative 3 equals 2, which is impossible. However, if you let f of x take any other number here, the x's will not cancel out, and so you'll be able to find an x value which solves the equation. And just looking at this thing, we can also see that as x tends towards infinity, uh, these, well, you've got a really, really big number plus 2 divided by a really, really big number minus 3, so the 2 and negative 3 become pretty insignificant in the fraction, and so the whole thing gets closer and closer towards 1, but never quite reaches it. It's always slightly different than 1 because of the plus 2 and the minus 3. However, it gets closer and closer to 1. And same thing in the other direction as it gets closer and closer towards negative infinity. Right, so this situation here, this is called a horizontal asymptote. So horizontal means uh, side to side, side to side, like this, and hence the name horizontal asymptote. All right, here's the graph of a slightly different function, y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 4. It's still a rational function because it's a polynomial divided by another polynomial, and it's in simplified form because x plus 4 is not a factor of x squared minus 2x plus 1. And so let's say it's equal to r of x divided by q of x. Now we usually use p of x. Don't we? p of x divided by q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials. All right, and we see that we have another vertical asymptote because as x tends towards negative 4, we have p of x goes towards, uh, what is that, 16 plus 8 plus 1, so 25, and q of x goes towards 0. So that results in this vertical asymptote by the same kind of reasoning as before. Now, on the other hand, we also have this asymptote here, which is neither horizontal nor vertical, and we call this one an oblique asymptote. So here oblique means not horizontal or vertical. And now I suggest you pause the video and see if you can figure out where this line y equals x minus 6 came from. 
why why does it why does the function get closer and closer towards uh, x minus six as x goes in the infinity or negative infinity directions? Okay, and the answer is actually just polynomial division. If we go ahead and do this division, x squared minus 2x plus 1. If we divide it by x plus 4, then, uh, well, x, uh, x squared plus 4x, do our subtraction, so that would be minus 6x plus 1, and so we uh, go ahead and multiply by minus 6, there's the x minus 6 part, and so we get minus 6x um, minus uh, 24. And then we get uh, 25 as our remainder. Alright, so in particular, that means we can rewrite this function as... Uh, x minus 6 plus 25 divided by x plus 4. And then clearly as x tends towards plus or minus infinity, 25 divided by x plus 4 tends towards 0. So we get closer and closer towards our oblique asymptote x minus 6, which is what the function clearly does here as x goes in the positive or negative infinity directions. Okay, so just to recap, asymptotes. An asymptote is a straight line that the curve approaches or tends towards. Asymptotes can be horizontal, vertical, or oblique. Horizontal asymptotes are parallel to the x-axis. Vertical asymptotes are parallel to the y-axis and oblique asymptotes are neither horizontal nor vertical.